Good morning, Crossroads. Good morning. That was actually pretty good. I'm impressed. <laughs> I just want to welcome you here to Crossroads Church this morning. My name is Dean. This is my wife, Awanu. We're elders here at the church, and we just want to welcome you, whether you're in person today or online. Thank you. I just want to give you a quick rundown on what to expect today. We're going to enter into worship in just a few moments. Uh, before we do, we just want to let you know that we will be in the guest reception, which is through doors number one on the left-hand side to the glass windows um, after service. We'd love to meet you. Our family will be there. We have two little ones who would love to meet you as well. Um, after we do some worship, we're going to get an opportunity to give our tithes and offerings, and then you're going to hear a powerful message from Pastor Mark. Again, I just want to welcome you, and thank you so much for joining us today. All right, Pastor Reds, ready to worship? Would you stand with us? Yes. I hear the yeses. Amen. All right, let's put our hands together. One of my favorites, Rattle. We're going to hear those bones rattle today. Amen. Yeah, that's right. We're going to sing with a joyful heart. We have a lot to be joyful for. Yes. Sunday's empty too Since when has impossible Ever stopped you It hasn't, amen Woo. This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise Make a dead man walk again Open the grave I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live this is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Yes. All right, we're going to sing this out. Woo. Pentecostal fire. Pentecostal fire. Stirring something new. You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. That's right.
the team this morning, we've been talking about the power of our words. And as we were singing that, I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, somebody needs to declare this over your life. I'm coming out. I'm going to live. I'm going to live again. And I declare that over you this morning. I'm going to live again. You're going to live again. This trial that's come against you, this thing that you see in your way, it's not meant to hold you down because God is saying live. God is saying live. Dead bones live. And we declare that this morning. I'm going to live again. Hallelujah. Yes. yes, God, we praise you. Thank you, God. Yes, I give you glory for all you've brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do your presence is an open door we want you Lord like never before your presence is an open door 
So come now, Lord, like never before. You know, I was, as I was thinking, we want you, Lord, like never before. You know, sometimes I come to God and I expect him to do the thing that he did last time. God, do it again. God, I want to hear from you like I did last time. But this morning he's saying, I'm going to do a new thing. That's right. That's right. Isaiah 43. Here we go. A new thing. Isaiah 43. Verse 19 says, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Thank you, God. So this morning, if you feel dry, if you feel like you're going through a dry wasteland, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but today he wants to do a new thing. He wants to do something new. So I need you to open your eyes and open your heart to receive the new thing that the King of Kings wants to do this morning. Can we do that? Can we just give him a moment? God, we just give you a moment. Because you're not wanting to work the way we want you to. You're not wanting to work the way we think you will, God. You're wanting to do a new thing. Father, you are wanting to be our Lord. And this morning we wait on you. God, this morning we declare breakthrough is coming. I see a miracle. And God, I see many miracles in this place today. Come on, sing this with me. I know. And I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop. Cause I know breakthrough is this morning it's coming by faith I see a miracle my God made me a promise and it won't stop now it won't stop now I know breakthrough is coming Cause by faith I see a miracle my God made me a promise and it won't stop So good, amen. Amen. I just want to invite you guys, if you want to take a seat for a second, if you want to remain standing, I just want to take a moment just to sit. As she was, as Lindsay was saying, we just want to sit or you can stand in his presence today. I was thinking about this next song and it was talking about um, this quote I was thinking about was holding on to something for dear life. It's it's easy to hold on to something, right? And not to let it go. And then there are times in our life where we want to hold on to something, but it's easy, but we should. We want to let go. Does that make sense? So, so here we are. We're holding on to something we don't want to let go, and then we're holding on to something we're willing to let go. I felt like the Lord was saying, just like what Lindsay was saying, is He wants to be Lord of your life, and so don't let go of His promises of what He's told you. Hang on to Him, and hang on to Him, and let go of the things that are killing you. Let go of the things that are uh, addiction or, or driven to that, and, and hold on to Him. Hold on to Him.
and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard. Just sing it to him. Through it all, Father. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well. It is well. 
it is well. Hallelujah, it is well. We say it is well. It's well with us, God. We're okay with it's well. We're okay with you, God. We're in your arms, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Only you, Jesus. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. Father, we, we thank you for that message today. You're not stopping in miracles. You're continuing to go on. We can hold on to your promises that what you say is true. And we can let go of the things that are killing us. And we run to you, Father. You're the only one who matters. You're the only one that can free us from the bondage and the chains that we're in. And we want total freedom, total abandonment to you. We thank you, God, for this church. We thank you for what you're doing. Lord, I know you're not stopping, and you won't stop now. You're continuing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you guys for being here today. Good morning and thank you for worshiping God with us at Crossroads. If you are new to Crossroads, let me tell you what makes us unique as a church. We are a growing and thriving church that believes in the truth of God's Word and the power of His Spirit. At Crossroads, we are all about loving people everywhere and everything we do is based on four things we love most. We love salvation, finding new life in Jesus. We love missions sharing our faith across the ocean and across the street. We love creativity, sharing God's love in unique ways, and we love diversity, striving so our church looks as much like heaven as possible. I'd love to invite you to check out our guest reception after service in our Welcome Center. There you will meet some of our pastors. We have many ways you can grow in your faith. Check out our amazing kids and youth ministries or one of our many discipleship groups. You can learn more about us, join a group, register to be baptized, or attend our monthly My Church Lunch, navigate our facilities, or even give your offering all on our church website. Be sure to check out www.crossroads.church. Thank you for visiting us today. Know that you are loved and you are cared for here at Crossroads Church. Good morning. I'm Marcia Aycock. I'm one of the leaders here at Crossroads. Welcome to church. Welcome to our family. We're so excited that you're a part of us being here with us today and worshiping God. It's been an awesome experience, amen? If you have questions, if you need help in any way, we would love to help. Uh, let me know or an usher know or someone at guest services and we'll help you do whatever you need to do. We are here for you. You can find a connect card there close by you in the puke's back seat. And uh, the QR codes on there lead you to all kinds of info about Crossroads. Check it out. Well, it's offering time right now at Crossroads. We are excited to give in this house all we love to give. Making God first place in our lives. First in our priorities. First with our time. First in our finances. Oh, Father, we make you first. First and foremost, we love to give and to watch God as He uh, brings all kinds of wonderful things into our life here at Crossroads. As we give, everything that God has planned begins to come to pass. Together, we absolutely see the miraculous happen right here. 
The Etchos are already in place, getting ready to serve us this morning. If this is your first time in giving, we have a number of ways you can give, both online and in person. So uh, get your offering ready as we give our first and our very best to God today. The first Sunday in March, let's do it together. Heavenly Father, we love your mighty presence in the house. Oh, you're awesome. You make everything worthwhile just to be here in your presence. Oh, Father, what a great experience it is. We thank you, Father, for your leadership. We thank you, Father, for your hand upon us. We thank you, Father, for the blessing that flows from heaven into our lives and into our church. Father, we thank you for the financial overflow more than enough as every need is met and money left over, Father, every ministry fully funded. We love that. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And everybody in the house said, Amen. May it ever be. Morning. morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Everybody doing well? Good, good. My name is Mark Johnson. I'm the lead pastor here at Crossroads Church. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here with us, worshiping with us, whether you are in person or whether you are watching us online. Thank you so much for choosing to worship God at Crossroads Church. I've got to say, God is doing something in our church. And I want to invite you to be a part of the journey with what God is doing in and through Crossroads Church. I want to invite you first and foremost, if you're here today, before we jump into anything, I just feel like I need to say this and put this out there. If you are here today and you feel far away from God, let me invite you to join this wonderful and beautiful journey of faith. There is more to life than just buying some cars or having a house or buying clothes or going to the grocery store. There is more to this life. And the Heavenly Father wants to invite you into a deeper journey. Is it always easy? No, but it's always worth it. Amen? Well, before we jump into the Word of God today, in fact, go ahead and start turning to the book of 1 Samuel. I have a few announcements I would like to highlight of some upcoming events that are special and important to us as a church. The first one, tonight at 6 p.m. is our annual business meeting. This is an opportunity where the voting members of the church can get together and uh, uh, you don't have to be a voting member to attend, but you do have to be a voting member to vote. That's kind of given in the name, voting member. But uh, we gather together, we look at uh, how God has blessed us over the past year. And uh, we look at finances, we look at how everything is, and that's happening tonight at 6 p.m. if you'd like to be a part of that. Then next Sunday, everybody say next Sunday. We have a special screening uh, in the evening, 6 p.m. Confirm, 5.30, okay, 5.30. So that was a test, Jody, and you passed. Well done. <laughs> um, we are screening a documentary entitled Letters to the American Church uh, based on a book. And uh, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, gonna, it's a great, great documentary. It's a needed uh, documentary. It, um, it's challenging. And uh, we're going to be screening the documentary to it. So you want to be here next Sunday night at 5.30 p.m. I hear uh, other churches are coming and uh, it's, we're trying to get as many people here as possible. So be here for that. Then, March 31st. Everybody say March 31st. 
That is Easter. As you can see, there's a big rock wall behind me, and that is in preparation for our Easter celebration. The set team has been hard at work, and as you can see, that space is not an easy space to fill. And so we are preparing, and our theme this year for Easter is He Said Live. He said live. He speaks life into every situation. So my challenge to you, because it's March, it's the first Sunday of March, so my challenge to you is who you bring in. Who you bring in this Easter. It's going to be phenomenal. We've got, um, we're going to have a, a live crucifixion depicted up here. Um, not a real one, a pretend one, but it's, it looks about as real as it can look. Um, and if you've not seen our special crucifixion set, it is impressive. CC Brass, our, our jazz and brass band is going to be with us. Our <laughs> choir, we've got our choir happening. It is going to be a full, I dare I say spectacle. But the most important part is we are going to be telling with creativity the beautiful story of grace and salvation. Jesus dying on the cross and rising again for you and I. Amen? That's happening. So who are you bringing? Bring somebody. And then finally, I'm excited to present an opportunity. In April, in April, I have been asked to be the keynote speaker at the Assemblies of God in Kenya, their national youth conference. Yeah. Um, and it's an odd thing because... In Kenya, youth is not defined as 12 to 18 like it is here. Youth is defined as 18 to like 27. So it's like a young adults um, conference and leaders and, and young men and women from all over the nation of Kenya will be gathering together for this conference and we want to be a blessing to this, uh, to this conference and to these people. So um, there's an opportunity for us to raise some funds for curriculum, resources, and conference costs for this. And um, I would love us to try to raise uh, $5,000 if that's possible. Um, so what you do is just, des if you're going to designate, just designate missions. Just our, our missions fund. And we have an opportunity. Know that if there's any money that comes in over and above that, that is going to go um, as, as a gift for future, future missions projects. Okay, future missions projects. So, um, so the 5,000 for that event, and then anything above and beyond that, um, we're going to determine the need. And if there's future things on the road that they're going to have there, um, we don't know that exactly for sure yet, but that extra money will go to that. And if not, trust me, we're gonna, it's going to go so it's... It's going to bless somebody, amen? Because we're, we're a missions-driven church. So um, if you could, I know the offering's gone by, but over the next couple of weeks, or I believe there's some offering slips, on the seat in front of you, or online, we would, if you want to be a part of that, we would love to, to be a blessing to these young adults. Okay, those are my announcements. All right, business is, is completed. Let's open up the Word of God. I love God's word. It's more than just a collection of good statements and, and, and stories. It is alive. It's living. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the one document that as I read it, it changes me from the inside out. You can't get that from a novel. You can get a good entertaining story from a novel, but you can't get life change. Right? You can't get that from an inspirational poster. You can't get that from a fortune cookie. It's only the Word of God. Amen. That is the words of life. Amen? So, we are in a brand new series. It's our first week entitled, The Goat. Anybody know what the goat means? Surely we all do at this point in culture. It stands for the greatest of all time. Our world is full of sports. Those sports are full of athletes. Some of them are great. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what differentiates a great athlete from those that somehow elevate well beyond those considered great? The exceptional ones. 
the ones that are classified as the greatest of all time. What makes them different? What makes them better than the others? In fact, some aren't necessarily better, but they end up with better careers. There's just something about them that stands out. You cannot tell me that on the day of the combine, if you take their pictures and put them side by side, Tom Brady and Cam Newton, if you put those two men's pictures at the combine side by side, you could not convince me that Tom Brady would go on to be known as the greatest quarterback to ever play the game, and Cam Newton wouldn't. Cam Newton is a physical specimen of athleticism and talent, but yet Tom Brady, who looks like your uncle, who tries to play backyard quarterback at barbecues, looks like somebody just forgot to unlock the gate and he wandered onto the field. But yet here we are. So what makes them different? In fact, you'd be surprised to find out that what makes the goats unique is nothing physical. It's not physicality. It's not talent. It's something intangible. It's something in the heart. It's something mental. And this morning and the next few weeks, we are going to plumb the depths of what makes these athletes the goats, what makes them unique. And we're going to look at the same traits to some of the greats in the Bible. We're going to be challenged by them. So the first week, this morning, we're going to look at two different athletes. One who is a boxer and one who is a soccer player. The title of my message today, in fact, I don't know, they probably have already put up the QR code, but we have a QR code on the screen if you want to follow along online with my notes. The title of my message today is The Hit They Don't See Coming. The Hit They Don't See Coming. In fact, I've got a, a quick video, I believe it's ready to go, to highlight these two athletes that we're going to be talking about today. Samuel 16, 7 says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his height or his stature because I have rejected him for God does not see as man sees since God, since man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. These two athletes that we're going to be talking about today, one, you may know his name or know who he is. It's Rocky Marciano. So the clips that we saw were of Rocky Marciano, who is arguably the greatest heavyweight of all time. He's the only heavyweight to retire with an undefeated professional record. He never lost as a professional. 48 and 0, 44 coming by way of knockout. He also won the title and defended it successfully six times. The other athlete, you might not have heard of him. His name is Manny Garincha. In fact, that's not his name. That is his nickname. And Garincha in Portuguese means little bird. And while most may not know this famous footballer, he is considered one of the greatest Brazilian footballers and the greatest dribbler that Brazil has ever seen. In fact, Pele who everybody knows Pele, right? He's considered the greatest soccer player of all time. 
Pele does not consider himself the greatest soccer player of all times. He considers Manny Garincha as the famous dribbler, the famous, the, the best footballer ever to come out of Brazil. So what makes them great? Why them and not other athletes? Why, in fact, why even pair these two guys together? Kind of an odd pairing, right? Footballer, boxer. Both of them exemplify the power of the hit you don't see coming. Both were overlooked and both were not supposed to be great. Let me tell you of Manny Garincha. As a child, Manny Garincha had a defect in his legs. In fact, his left leg was five inches shorter than his right leg. And because of that, as a child, his right leg, because of favoring it, started to turn inward. And he hobbled as a child. In fact, he was classified by Brazilian doctors as crippled. He was never meant to play soccer let alone play it professionally, let alone be one of the greatest footballers that Brazil has ever produced. But because of this seeming disadvantage in his legs, Manny Garincha established and created and developed a unique dribbling style that nobody could defend. It was this disadvantage of moving left and right that that made him great. Rocky Marciano was a little on the short side as a a heavyweight, but that was not actually what made him different or unique. What made him different was even though he was a little shorter, he had arms that were small. They were short on his, for his height. He had a very short span, short arms which caused him to defend differently, waiting on the back foot, sliding left and right, going low, lower than other opponents. In fact, because of this, he had to adapt his punch, waiting on his back foot and using the back foot as a spring forward, twisting his body into the punch. This is what made him, this unique defense and unique punching style, made him arguably the greatest heavyweight ever to step into the ring. A man who was not supposed to be great, a man whose arms were too short, he was too short to make any kind of impact. Know this, our God calls those the world has counted out. If you hear nothing else this morning, hear this. Others might be counting you out, but God is calling you to be more than a conqueror. Your disadvantage in the eyes of others is an advantage in the eyes of God. I don't know what you brought in with you today. I don't know what failures, I don't know what experiences, I don't know what disadvantages you brought with you today, but know this, our God is a God who sees things that others cannot. Our God is a God of calling. Our God is a God of empowerment. Our God is a God of equipping. There's more for you, baby! This morning we're also going to look at Two men in the word of God that everybody else counted out. The first we see in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. It says this, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long are you going to mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, because I have chosen a king for myself among his sons. Now we're going to skip down to verse 6 in the same chapter. Now when they entered, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is standing before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his height or at his stature, because I have rejected him, for God does not see as man sees. 
Since man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called uh, Abinadab and had him pass before Samuel. But he said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Next, Jesse had Shammah pass by. And he said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. So Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. It's a lot of sons. And Samuel said to Jesse, are, are, all these, are these all the boys? And he said, oh, the youngest is still left, but behold, he's tending the sheep. So Samuel said to Jesse, send word and bring him, for we will not take our places at the table until he comes here. So he sent word and brought him in. Now he was reddish with beautiful eyes and a handsome appearance. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward and Samuel set out and went to Ramah. It's a beautiful story of the differences between what God sees and what we see. We need to understand this first and foremost that man looks upon the outward appearance. In fact, I don't know if I could say that's a judgment statement, but it's just a statement of fact. It just, it is what it is, right? We judge by what we see. We judge by a person's stature. Physical beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? It's amazing. If you look through history and you see the, the, the standards of beauty throughout time, you know, right now, over the last hundred years, uh, leanness, skinniness is um, a standard of beauty. This, that's what we hold to. And it is amazing. If you look through history, you will see a lot of what uh, we consider as beautiful to be tied in with money and wealth. Now, check this out. I'm, I'm totally going off script here, but here we are. The reason why leanness and skinniness is considered a beautiful now is because it shows people that you have the money and resources and the time to devote on looking good. You've got the money for a gym membership. You've got the time to lift weights. You've got the priorities. It's, you're, you're dedicated enough. You're a winner. Why? Because you're dedicated. You're dedicated to how you look. But if you go back in time, and this is, I'll be honest with you, if I had a time machine, I would jump back to this time. Because robustness used to be the standard of beauty. It was a sign of wealth. If you were a king, you were meant to be robust and full-figured. Why? Because it showed that you had, you could afford to eat meat. You could afford to eat bread. Yeah. Right? I mean, if, if they had magazines back there, it would be guys like me on the cover of People magazine. <laughs> Handsomest man of the year. With a chicken leg in my hand. <laughs> but man looks upon the outward. God looks upon the heart. Aren't you so glad that God looks? And listen, this goes beyond just beauty and it, it is more skin deep because when we say man looks upon the outward, he looks upon actions, decisions, things that are said. Aren't you glad that God doesn't judge you on all your mistakes? Aren't you glad that God extends grace to you even though you mess up? Aren't you glad that God looks upon the heart? This should be encouraging and sobering to us both. Because what is the manner of your heart? What is the condition of your heart? Because that is what God is looking at. My first thought today is this. What eliminates you in their eyes elevates you in his. It's not even the fact that God overlooks what eliminates you in others' eyes. No, no, no. It's that very thing that God is wanting to use. It's that very thing that's considered a weakness by others that God considers a strength. Now check this out. David is younger and smaller than his siblings. David is all but forgotten by his father and his, 
in fact, Samuel says, do you got any other boys? And Jesse goes, let me think about it. Oh yeah, there's old what's-his-face out in the field. Old Opie, red hair, freckle-faced boy. Yeah, he's out there. He was forgotten. He was overlooked. But it is this, this, this being overlooked that makes David an amazing king. Because David is a compassionate king. He unites the kingdom together. He is compassionate. God is, look, it's this passion. David would rather be out in the field playing his harp, singing worship songs to God. And when everybody else, is, David's out there, he's doing his thing, man. He's just playing. Singing songs, writing songs to the Lord. But it is this very passion, this intimacy with the Lord that elevates David. And David becomes known as the man after God's heart. God is preparing Samuel by telling him, don't look at what others are seeing or claiming is a deficiency. He was counted out. David was counted out. In fact, it's David's lack of military experience, his lack of size, his lack of armor, his lack of a viable weapon that counted him out in the eyes of Saul the king, in the eyes of his brothers, in the eyes of Goliath, and in the eyes of the Philistines. But in one day, David brings freedom and liberty to the whole nation of Israel. And he didn't even use a sword to do it. He used a stone and a sling. And he didn't even bring a sword to the battle. He took Goliath's sword and removed his head with it. Don't count yourself out because they can't see what God sees. You may look in the mirror and not like what you see. You may look at your past and say, I don't like that. But God sees something in you that you can't even see in yourself. You just got to ignite your faith and keep moving forward because God sees more in you than you even see in yourself. There's more in you. There's more fight. There are more dreams. There's more. Don't let anybody count you out. Don't let anybody count you out. God sees something that nobody else can see. Trust in him. Second thought, you are not being passed by. You are being prepared. Come on. This is for somebody here today. You're not being passed by. You are being prepared. Think of all those days in the field doing the job that nobody else wanted to do. Dealing with them stinky old nasty sheep that bite. All right? Doing the thing that nobody wants to do. David was being prepared. Imagine all the loneliness. Imagine all the frustration. But God wasn't passing David over. He was preparing him. In fact, the preparation doesn't stop. Because in 1 Samuel 16, he's anointed as king. And it's almost about 20 years from the time that God anoints David as king to the time that he ascends the throne. God is preparing him. Do not shun the time of preparation that God has you in. Let's be real. We're all about advancement. We're all about promotion. See, we want to be promoted, but we don't want to be prepared. So often we say, oh, God has a, he's got a calling. He's got something he wants me to do. He's got anointing. I want to step in. Quick, give me the position. Give me the power. Give me the promotion. But God is saying, no, 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 you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. What you're in is a time of preparation. Well, God, I've got this ministry that I want to launch, and I want to do this, and I want to walk big and take big steps because God has called it. No, 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 right now, you just need to serve wherever is needed. You need to serve wherever is needed. Don't seek promotion. Rest in being prepared. I've seen it time and time again. People, they seek the limelight. They seek the spotlight only to be burnt up because they're not prepared for the heat that comes along with the spotlight that they seek. Are you with me? I can't tell you how many young preachers that feel a call to preach. I want to preach. And then immediately they want to, I want to fill stadiums. 
I don't want to, I want a big promotion and they seek advancement. Stop. You're not prepared for that. You're not prepared for that. You need to rest in the preparation. So the season that you may be in today, let me encourage, can I encourage you? Are y'all with me today? Are we doing good today? Everybody got their coffee? The screens just blipped out. The screens are not with me. They just blipped out. We'll get them back on. They get cantankerous sometimes. Um, Listen to me. The season you're in may seem like it's frustrating. It may seem like you're, you know, you're throwing, you're throwing paper wads into the wind. You know what I'm saying? Everything is just coming right back at you. And you're getting no traction. You may feel like you're not getting any traction in your marriage. You may feel like you're not getting any traction with your kids. You're trying to, to develop them. You're trying to work with them. You're trying to repair a relationship. But they just don't want anything to do with it. Listen to me. Don't give up. Don't quit. God is preparing you for something. It is a time of difficulty for sure. But know this, that you and I serve a God who walks through the wilderness with us. He walks through the valleys with us. He is there in the desert. When you feel alone, when you feel dry, when you feel like you're ready to give up, know this, God is with you. Don't shun this season. Keep your head up, keep your shoulders squared back and keep moving forward because God has something for you. The calling is followed by consecration. Consecration occurs through the crucible of obedience. It's hard to obey. 20 years between the time David was anointed king and he took the throne, Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness. Time of preparation. It took took 40 years to get all of the influence of Egypt out of his life. Took 40 years to get get Egypt out of Moses before God sent Moses back into Egypt. But God was preparing him. Preparing him for a season that Moses had no idea was coming his way. You don't know what God is calling you to do. You don't know the road. Oh, hear me today, somebody. You don't know the road that God is laying, laying before you. You don't know the path he's preparing for you. You don't know the level of leadership. You don't know what God is about to just unveil before you, but don't quit. Don't give up on that time of consecration and preparation. Third thought this morning. Your obstacles give you a fresh outlook, a unique outlook. It was David's time as a shepherd that allowed him to see the chinks in Goliath's armor. It was David's time as a shepherd that allowed him to see that a rock could take down the mightiest of beasts. It was his time as a shepherd that prepared him, that gave him an outlook that nobody else on the battlefield saw. It was that time that David used to his advantage. David would have never been ready for war if he hadn't been in the wilderness. You see, it's easy. When we feel counted out, it's easy to get bitter, isn't it? Come on, let's let's get real. We see other people, you know, looking on social media, and we're looking at their highlight reel, you know? And we're saying, oh, doing this, things are great, doing this, God, God's blessing me a hundredfold, all this. And we look at it, and the problem is we're comparing their highlight reel to our blooper reel. We look at our life and go, oh, you see that time I messed up there? You see that time I messed up there? God will never bless me. God, will, I will never have what they have. And it's easy to get bitter. It's easy to get bitter. You got to keep your eyes on him. Got to keep your eyes on him. Because it was this unique perspective that David brought into the battle that gave him the victory. You see, David knew that Goliath will fall because why? The lion fell. The lion fell. 
He was able to protect the sheep. And so he knew. Mm. The giant, the things, this is good, this is for somebody, come on. The things that you are slaying today may not seem like giants, but they are preparing you to take down giants in your future. Come on. Come on, let's uh, grab a hold of that. Somebody grab a hold of that. They may not seem like giants in your eyes, but they are giants in God's eyes. And it's giving you a unique perspective, a unique outlook on situations to come. In fact, God approaches Moses in the burning bush and, and Moses disqualifies himself. He's disqualified, unable to do the task asked of him in his own eyes. He says he's unable to speak to Pharaoh because he said, Lord, in Exodus 4.10, I am slow of speech and sluggish of mouth. In 6.12 and 6.30, Twice again, he refers to himself as slow of speech. Now, some people will say that that means uh, he had a stutter. In fact, Jesse Duplantis famously preached a sermon, a sermon years ago where he stutters through the entire time, kind of trying to, to imitate and mimic the stutter that, they, that Moses might have had. I think it's very possible Moses was just not very quick on his feet. I think that Moses was the kind of guy that he was the best debater in the arguments that he had in his mind after the fact. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know, some of y'all are with me on this. You get into an argument and debate and your mouth just kind of clams up and then a half an hour later you're like, oh, I should have said this. Should have said that. Oh, I'm so eloquent 30 minutes after the fact. Whatever the reason was, Moses had disqualified himself in his own eyes. But it's this humility that Moses has. It's this unique outlook that the word of God says that there is nobody more humble than Moses. It is this unique outlook that Moses takes with him, this quiet strength that he takes with him into Egypt. And as he operates as the hand of God, bringing judgment upon the nation of Egypt, brings an entire nation out of captivity and bondage. And it's this humility and quiet strength that makes him the needed leader in the wilderness. A shepherd on the backside of the wilderness, who is slow of speech and sluggish of mouth, finds himself in a few years to be the ruler of a new forming nation. And they enter Egypt, I mean, they enter the wilderness as this motley crew of ex-slaves and, and, and some Egyptians, some people from other nations who just kind of tagged on, this motley crew of people who had no clue what it meant to be free. In a matter of 40 years, they emerge a mighty nation that strikes fear into the heart of all other nations around them. And it's through that leadership, that humble leadership, that they become that. God's calling you to something great. You don't know the impact of what God is calling you to. It's that unique perspective that God is equipping you with. You have a unique perspective. So this morning as a worship band makes their way onto the stage and begins playing shortly, I want to challenge you, be the hit that they don't see coming. Be the hit the enemy doesn't see coming. You see, here's the thing. David, the overlooked shepherd boy, forgotten by his brother, his father was questioned by King Saul and mocked by Goliath. This boy single-handedly delivers Israel from the tyranny of the Philistines. David was the hit 
that Goliath never saw coming. Taking down the mightiest of all Philistine warriors. God is challenging us to be the hit they don't see coming. You've been strategically positioned right where you are. Be the hit the enemy doesn't see coming. Now, here's another great thing about Rocky Marciano. I wanted to kind of conclude with this thought. 44 wins by knockout. Rocky Marciano, because his arms were short, had to play around with taking his right from different angles. Launching it, going around, coming up underneath, helping to perfect the famous punch known as the uppercut. Because he would come from low and strike upward. He didn't invent it, but he helped perfect it. In fact, his right hand was nicknamed Suzy Q. Suzy Q, after the, this is now the 1940s, 1950s, uh, the models, those pinup girls, he was named Suzy Q. Why? Because his right hand was a knockout. That's because um, he would come from below and hit you and you didn't see it coming. Guys, God is challenging you today. I know the enemy might be against you. I know life might be against you. It may feel like the whole world is just pressing down on you, that the world, the stresses of this world, the enemy is just, cow is just towering over you, pressing down on you. That's the perfect time for an uppercut. That's the perfect time to step into the anointing that God has placed on your life, the calling that he's placed on your life. Step on uh, the word of God and stand on the word of God and step into praise, lean into his spirit and be the uppercut. Nobody, nobody would have looked at Manny Garincha or Rocky Marciano as young men before they started their career and said, that guy's going to be one of the greatest of all times. In fact, we just read it. We got biblical proof that nobody looked at David as a young man and said, oh, thou, that's the future king of Israel. Oh, look at him. They did it with Saul. Oh, he's tall. He's handsome. He's strong. Look at him. Woo! God looks upon the heart. Nobody would have heard Moses on the backside of a desert, slow in speech, and said, that's a man who can speak to kings. Aren't you glad that God doesn't look at what everybody else looks at? The world may be looking at you and say, you, you got nothing to offer. God says, yes, you do. The world may be looking at you saying, you're nothing special. God's saying, I think you're special. In fact, let me, let me take it one more. Let me, let me conclude this. The book of Isaiah gives a prophecy of the coming Messiah. And it says, we esteemed him not. We esteemed him as stricken. Nobody looked upon him or will look upon him with favor. Jesus came from the lowliest tribe, humble, humble beginnings, being laid down his first bed, a feeding trough. Came from Nazareth. And there was a joke at the time, can anything good come from Nazareth? But aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? He came anyway. Amen. To be the Messiah, to be the payment for your sin and mine, to live a perfect life and to die a horrific death so you and I can live in freedom. I'm going to ask everybody to stand to their feet today. Know this. There is a beautiful and amazing life in front of you. And it is all because Jesus gave the ultimate uppercut to death, hell, and the grave. He gave the ultimate knockout punch to Satan, to sin. 
And he did it so that you and I can have a relationship with him. So with every head bowed and every eyes closed, we're about to enter into what we call our response time. But before we do, let me ask this. Is there anybody in here? Is there anyone in here that would say, Pastor Mark, I want to ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I want to I want to cross that line of faith. Maybe you've prayed this prayer before, but it's been a long, long time and you know that you have, you've moved away from him and you're far away from God. Today is your day. Today is the day of new life. Today is the day. Today's the day that you and I, that you get to be the uppercut that death doesn't see coming. As you cross that line of faith, as you accept Jesus into your heart, You can deal a knockout blow to death because you could live forever with Jesus. You don't have to be separated from him. That promise can be yours. So if you're in this place, you say, yeah, I want to cross that line of faith. Would you simply slip up a hand so we can pray with you today? Is there anybody? I'm going to scan the audience. Anybody in this place? Know this. Salvation is for you today. Salvation is for you today. New life is for you. Now I'm going to ask this question. Have you been counting yourself out? Have you been believing the lies that the world has been saying about you? Have you been believing the lies that maybe even people, friends, family, are you allowing yourself to be counted out? Maybe You need to step up your faith today and step up that sense of grit and to be the uppercut. Be the hit that the enemy doesn't see coming. Be the knockout blow that Satan doesn't see coming. But it's going to take a little bit of grit. It's going to take a little bit of determination. It's going to take a little bit of creativity. But God has given you a unique outlook. He's preparing you And he's elevating you because he's good. So I'm going to pray. And we're going to open up these altars. We have altars here if you would like to pray. We have family altars if you'd like to come down in a group or a family. I'm going to go ahead and ask our elders to come down front and be ready to pray with you. We have spiritual leaders that are here to pray with you. In fact, there are some that have communion to administer to you if you'd like to do that. And as they're making their way, let me say this. On the way out, if you said yes to Jesus today but just didn't raise your hands, we have these I said yes stations. Stop off by one of those and there's going to be an elder there to talk with you, give you a gift, and help you on this wonderful journey. But let's pray and let's respond to the word of God as the worship band leads us in one last song. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Lord, I pray that somebody in this place would lean into the calling that you have on their life. Somebody in this place would stand firm in what you have called them to do and would begin walking into this beautiful destiny that you have laid out for them. I pray that you would give dreams. I pray that you would give visions. I pray that you would help people step into that destiny, step beyond an ordinary life, step into the extraordinary and step into kingdom impact because that's what it's all about. I pray you'd give us the faith to do so. Because I see out, as I look out on this crowd, Lord, I see a crowd of world changers. I see a church of world changers. People that the world might have even counted out, but, but you're counting them in. I pray that we would begin walking in that in faith. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's respond to his word today. Let's worship together.
good in every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender
Can we just lift our hands all across this place? I believe His Spirit is here. His presence is here. He wants to do something in your life. And as a sign of surrender, we're going to sing through that bridge again. Break up the ground of all my traditions. Some, some of us need to break up that, that fallow ground in our hearts, don't we? We need to break that up and let God do something fresh in our life. Heavenly Father, we just, as a sign of surrender to you, we lift up our hands and pray that you would break up the hard ground in our hearts, the hard ground in our lives, and do a fresh work, do something fresh in our lives. Do something fresh, God. Yes, Lord, we need you today. making us overcomers oh yes the time we spend with him here is encouragement preparation we're ready for it when the time comes if you would grab one of these before you walk out today find somebody that you want to just uh, that needs Jesus Say, listen, we're having a really, really special Easter service. You don't want to miss it. You'll miss half your life. And I'd love for you to come and sit right beside me. And I would love to meet you at the door. Text me when you get there. Come by, I'll pick you up. I'll take you to breakfast that morning. A thousand ways that you can uh, get somebody engaged. So take these with you and find somebody that you can touch for Jesus and bring him here on Easter Sunday morning. Have an awesome week. We'll see you again Wednesday night and Sunday morning as well. 
God's blessing all over you in Jesus name thank you so much for worshiping with us online and joining us if you have a comment or a prayer make sure and click that little raised hand at the bottom and as always make sure to like and follow us on social media crossroads okc see you next time